Hey YouTube, it's Philip20 again. And I'm standing here at the breakers again. We got this breaker panel and this big breaker panel here. Uh, I've got two breakers. This, the inverter that I'm going to be using should never exceed 60 continuous amps. So I'm pretty confident in putting in 60 amp breakers for the inverter if I was going to be using it. So it's really simple to put these in. They're called snap-in breakers. These are Simmons breakers. And you just turn it at an angle and then press it in. See, it'll press in just like so. They're hard to press in, so you'll have to uh, press it in. But make sure it's in the right slot. So there, now we got two breakers installed. And we got, uh, I'll show you how that is at the end. But for right now, I'm gonna knock out some holes here and some holes here. Let me zoom, uh, turn it up so you can see. I've got a hole to knock out in this box at the top and I've got another hole in the other box that I have to knock out. So I'm gonna put in a two inch connector. These two inch connectors are two inches. I'm going to put another piece of PVC pipe on the inside of this. It's called Schedule 40 PVC pipe. This is what people, uh, the co uh, electric companies use most of the time for uh, outside connections, but I've got this stuff. Also got uh, a protector ring. It's a soft rounded ring. Also got a uh, lock nut. You can see it right here. This is our lock nut right here. So first we're gonna put that connector in and then we're gonna put another one in on the other side and we're gonna have a piece in between it. So when that uh, piece is in between it, it'll be glued on the inside and uh, don't wanna drop it. <laughs> I've already dropped it once. And then we just put our cover on the outside of it so it'll look like this when it's done. This is to protect any uh, wire from getting damaged. Most of the time it's used for number four gauge wire or larger. I'm putting it in there just in case I decide to go with number four later because it's not easy to take all these wires back out and put it back in. So what we're gonna do is tie it all up. Uh, I'm gonna put a 60 amp breaker from here off of this breaker panel. This breaker panel here, it's gonna tie into here. So currently I only have two breakers. So what I'll do is I'll show you how this works, then I'm gonna take it back out and put my breaker in over there. That way, right, I didn't purchase three. I don't have a ton of money, so I can only do a little bit at a time. But I'll do what I can. I'll demonstrate how this works with our switch. I can actually demonstrate that now. We'll be right back after I put this bar in, okay? Okay, YouTube. I'm currently putting this bar in. It's a real small bar. And it's got two connectors like this, and they just slide into the breaker from the inside part, okay? And then it comes with two screws as well and a face plate to hold the breakers together closely. This plate goes on, and then you put these slide bars in, and then you put the main bar in. So, I'm going to close both the breakers, close the uh, open the circuit, and then I'm going to close it on one side. So, now, all I've got to do is put the screw in because it's going to hold itself. And then the other screw Okay, so now when power is coming in this side, it was supposed to turn off the breaker on that side and turn that one on. Okay, so I see how it works. It's guaranteed not to turn one on at the same time. So you turn one on, okay, and if it was, uh, you was gonna turn this one on, it 
will automatically shut this one off. Okay? So it won't hold them together, but it, you, both can be off at the same time, but both cannot be on at the same time. You see it? So power will go in from the breaker panel, and you can't turn it on by pressing it. You have to turn it on separately. So once it's on, you'll have uh, your breaker will turn this one off. So if I want to turn this one on, this one will turn off. That's great, ain't it? So it's just a manual transfer switch. It's real simple. It's only $23. And it's a problem resolved immediately. So next, what I need to do, I need to get power from this box here to this box here. And what I'm going to do is use the number 6 gauge with ground coming over. So I'm going to use the number 6 gauge going in to this side here. And then I'm going to also have a neutral leg wire that goes on this bus bar here. And it's going to tie into this bus bar here. It's right there. It's this long bar all the way across on both sides. I'm going to tie it in with number 6 gauge wire and it's going to come over up it's going to come out the hole that I'm going to make here through a 2 inch pipe and it's going to go in through the hole I'm going to make here through a 2 inch pipe and then it's going to come in and tie in right here and right here so I also need to run a ground wire from this panel to earth ground. I, I think it's possible to just run it here to this bus bar, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to run it directly to ground, and I'm going to run it to a direct ground stake. I already have one just on the other side of this wall. I'm going to put a new one in. I want to make sure that it's got a firm ground. And I'm also going to put that ground on a bar here. Okay, and I'll try to explain to it in a different video why, why I'm going to put a bar here. It's going to be a simple ground bar. It's only going to have two connectors on it, and one's, uh, it's going to ground my inverter out. Okay, so I'll have to run wires from to my inverter as well. Uh, but right now it's not uh, part of the video. So once I got this uh, holes knocked out, I'll get back with you and show you what I'm talking about. Because I'm going to have to take this panel off the wall and put it back on the wall because it was cheaper for me to buy a connector, two connectors of PVC pipe than an all thread two inch pipe that is steel. And it, I could have put it in, but it is expensive. I think it was $30 more. So it's cheaper for me to get this and put it in. So that's what I'll do. It's only six screws and there's no nothing tied to it. And I'll just get this done real quick and we'll be right back with the video. Okay, it's Phil 20 back. Uh, right here we got our connectors. Now we've got this piece of pop that needs to be in between those connectors. That connector is going to be just like this. But uh, it won't fit. As if you can see, it uh, was screwed to the wall. So what I've done is I de uh, unscrewed all the screws but one. And uh, I'm going to put this connector on. And uh, at the same time, I'm going to put it back up and screw it again. Now, it's slightly offset. It, so I'm going to have to lower this panel, which is very easy on a piece of wood. That's why we got the piece of wood there, because it's so easy to work with. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the drill, unscrew it. We dropped our screw. Now, I'm going to set the drill down. I'm going to put a piece of pipe in here. Okay. And I'm going to give it a nice love tap. I'm going to rotate the whole thing. Sit it in and wiggle it ever so slightly. And then 
and we're in business. So now, I'm going to pick the drill back up, put a screw right here. There we go. Now we got our connection between the two pieces. Uh, it seems like it'll do a fine job to me. And I hope it does. So I'm going to finish screwing all this down. And we'll get right back with you here shortly. Okay, so I've got this spare wire here. This is a number 6 gauge wire. And we've got 60 amp breakers, so they match together for uh, code in this area. So I'm going to run this wire over to my breaker panel and I'm going to run it through here and then down and it's going to tie into a breaker here at the bottom. There's can't really see it from your angle. Let's, okay, so I'm going to run it down to here. You still can't see it. This is a pretty long breaker panel. So I'm going to run it down through here and right here. Um, basically we're going to be seeing all this stuff, uh, all these 120 volt receptacles are going to be transferred over to this side here. And it's not too, too hard to get done. But uh, once it's done, I'll in, you know, have an emergency backup transfer switch. That way, if uh, the power goes out, I can plug a generator up to it that I can mount a receptacle right here and run it right outside the garage door. Or I can tie a uh, solar inverter or whatever you decide to do into it. But you know, you'll have your emergency backup because it, this bar here allows that to happen, which is pretty nice. And once I get this started, uh, once I get this going through, I'll go ahead and uh, show you some more of what's going on. Okay, YouTube, this is uh, going to show you the rest of what's going on here. You've got this bus bar, which has the neutral leg that goes in over here and ties in to this neutral leg bus bar here. Okay, and then you've got the power that comes in from this breaker panel and it ties in right here where I'm pointing. Okay, so you got these two black wires. They run up and over and back and inside of this. So if I turn this power on, now we got power on this bus bar directly from the main breaker panel. Okay, so there's no way that this switch will let this breaker here turn on. So, in order for it to turn on, I can shut it off here and turns this one on, which is basically a transfer switch. It's very inexpensive to build one of these boxes compared to uh, buying a real cheap one that only does about 30 amps. You can have these put in by your, a professional electrician. You can buy all the materials and parts that you need at... Uh, you know, a su electrical supply company. And uh, if you've seen any of my, th the past two previous videos that I had, there's an electrical supply company that uh, I purchased from that you can get parts from if, if you're interested. Uh, it just depends on, you know, what you're going to be getting. They'll sell you lights or, you know, receptacles or, you know, whatever you're looking for. You, you just got to go and uh, uh, go get it. I don't know if they'll sell it to non-contractors or not. I am a contractor for heating and air conditioning. So that's a, that's a decision that they can make on their own. But for the stuff that, uh, you know, I, I do, it's, it's, you know, necessary for people to be knowledgeable about electricity, especially getting inside of a breaker panel. And this is going to be uh, on a permit. So, you know, I don't have to worry about any... Uh, electrical 
problems in the future because if you get inside of your breaker panel and you start working on it, the electric company will come to your house uh, and you know at one point in time or in the future and say, "Hey, this is not right. Something's wrong here. This is something's not. It's not supposed to be like this." Because they got a diagram of your house, an entire diagram of your house, and if there's one thing out out of out of whack, they're going to say, "Hey, this is not right." So. I'll get this completely inspected and uh, it, you know a permit pulled on it. It's not really hard to do, but uh, you know if you live off the grid and there's no electricity and you want to put a generator on one side and your power inverter on the other side, you could do that. Um, or you know, it's it's a complete uh, up to your discretion. I don't recommend getting in a breaker paddle. Uh, I recommend an electrician do it if you don't know how to do it. Um, and if you do know how to do it, I still recommend an electrician doing it so you can get a permit pulled. And once this is all complete and done, you'll have everything complete. So basically, I'm happy uh, to get this done today. And I, I'll end up pulling all these other wires all the way through here and tying it all in to this panel here. I don't have enough breakers to complete the task today, so when I get all the breakers, I'll need 16 single poles. Right now I've got three on this side. I'm going to leave all those single poles back into place. I don't want to take all those out and then switch them over to here. I'm just going to get new ones and I'm going to move the wires itself over into this panel. Uh, over a period of time and uh, the reason of that is because I want to make sure that the inverter will run everything so I'll move one wire over at a time a week to find out uh, how much you know the batteries can handle and if I need bigger battery bank then I'll uh, end up getting another battery bank I'm not exactly sure how many I'm going to start out with. I'm hoping as many as I can, but that just depends on what happens in the near future. Um, so I'm just trying to get uh, this process moving along. Right now it's a lot further just by having this together. I can get a battery bank and I can get the inverter set up and running now. Uh, as of right now, I can set it up and run stuff off of it. Um, so but I'm not going to run nothing until I get my uh, the, the solar array installed. I'm, I'll get the battery bank, maybe even turn the inverter on, check it out, and then I'll turn it back off. I'm not even going to switch it, you know, switch anything up until I'm ready. Um, on the other hand, I could just switch all the wires over now and just go ahead and get the permit uh, complete and pulled immediately. Uh, that way I can get start using this box as a uh, emergency backup for all the 110 volt receptacles. Well, this has uh, been a tax and this is, you know, something I enjoy. So here we go. We're on, uh, we're on a roll. I love that thing. That is so cool. It's Philip 20, Guns, Games, and Racing. And I will holler at y'all later.